What's up guys, Luis here from Alibi Security and today I'm going to talk about the setup and configuration of the custom images of the PVM monitor that we just brought on board. Before we get started, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. And if this video it benefits you, make sure to hit the like button and also the notification bell. That way you can get notified when new videos like this one are available. Let's get started. A public view monitor offers an additional layer of protection for retail environments looking to deter theft in high traffic and self checkout areas. Advertisements can also be added to the PVM in full screen, banner, and switching modes, giving retail the ability to run ads while recording. Click the link in the description below to get more specifications and information about this product. Okay, so getting started with the setup and configuration of the PVM monitor. Just to kind of give you a heads up, I'm only going to be covering how to add images, logos, and things like that to the device. This, other than that, it does operate exactly like a standard IP camera would, so you'll have all the same options uh, inside the web interface as well, which I'll show you that later. But now we're just going to focus on adding these images and these banners on the bottom of these devices using the actual software that comes with it. And I'll put a link in the description below for that software so you can actually download it if you don't have it already. But without further ado, let's take a look at the computer. And as you can see here, I do have a folder open um, with the package of the zip file. What we're really going to be focused on here is the VS Composer. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And the VS Composer kind of has two panels here. You have one on the left and one on the right. The left one is more of a discovery tool to kind of discover all the PVM devices on your network. Some good information about the PVM that it does come DHCP enabled. So if you do have a router on your network, it will pull automatically an address to that device. Also, the default username and password is admin for the username and admin for the password. And once you log in with that for the first time, it will prompt you like most devices these days to create a new password. And I've already done all that. So back to the software here. Um, once you open it up, if you hit the search option in the top left, you'll see that it did discover my PVM on the network. And if you click on this, it will give you some information on the right hand side there. Pretty much a lot of details about the device itself, IP address, uh, device name, subnet, etc. The cool thing is that this little blue button here will take you directly to the web login of that device. And we're going to do that later. So the first thing I want to cover is just how to add a brand image on the top left hand corner of your device. So the first thing you want to do is select your PVM device, go to deploy and go to brand image. And in this screen here, you want to make sure to put your username and password in, which is already deployed here for me. Uh, the password is already in there for me because I've been kind of doing testing here. So then I'm going to hit the browse button to select my logo. And here is my Alibi security logo here. So I'm going to hover over it for a second and see how it says 500 by 63. That's going to be important information that we're going to need to put in the, the width and height field here. So typically it'll come at zero and zero. So you want to make sure that is 563 or whatever your dimensions your, um, your logo is. So once that's all done there, you can hit the enable option to actually enable the logo on the device and hit OK. And as you can see on the device here, I'll bring it forward. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see there that it does have the Alibi security logo in the top left corner. Let me cover the camera. There we go. Um, you can see that it does have the Alibi security logo in the top left corner there. So that's how easy it is to add the logo. I think the hardest part about doing the logo is that you would have to find or, you know, get the logo size properly and have the proper uh, file type uh, in order for it to kind of show up on there. If you wanted to move the logo, you can go to deploy and go to brand image. And here in the X and Y axis, you can do 20 and 20. Hit OK there. And as you can see, and I'll bring this up again, you can see how it did, it did move down into the to the left a little bit there or to the right. So you can kind of use your X and Y axis to move this logo around the screen or however you would like to put it. Um, the last thing about the brand logo is that if you just don't want it there anymore, you can easily go to deploy and brand image and then, you know, hit the enable option there and that 
uncheck the enable option and that will make the uh, logo disappear. I'm gonna leave it on there for now because we're kind of just gonna add on top of everything else. So that covers everything for the brand image. Moving on to the ad on the right hand side, like the banner ad. So this is where it gets a little bit more um, intricate and maybe a little bit more steps involved on getting a brand ad on here. So what we'll do first is we'll go ahead and hit the, on the playlist side, we wanna go to new and we're gonna select banner ad. And we're gonna give that banner ad a name. You see, I've been doing a bunch of tests here. We'll do video test one and hit okay there. That creates the playlist. There's nothing in that playlist as of right now. So what we need to do is add some items in there. So we'll hit the plus option. And in here I have add, so I'm gonna select that add. And if you click on it, it will actually give you a preview of the ad itself. And down here you can actually select the uh, duration or how long you want that ad to show before it switches to the next item in the playlist. If that's the only item in the playlist, it will never switch. It'll just be consistently on that right hand side of the screen here. I'm just gonna add another one. And I'm gonna select add to, hit open. And I'm gonna leave that one at five seconds. I can preview that as well. Um, once that is done, you wanna hit save to save that playlist. Um, just hit okay from, at that point. You wanna override it, you wanna hit okay. And now that that is saved, what I found out that you have to actually go to open and then go to video test in here, hit okay, and then go to deploy, and then select add deploy at that moment. So my password is already in there, it's got video test one, um, already pre-populated there, I'm gonna hit okay. And as you can see on the screen here, let me cover the mic, you can see that it did put the banner ad there. This one will be there for 15 seconds, and then it will switch to the other ad as well. So you can rotate ads, you can add quite a few in there. Actually, I don't know how many you can add in there, but I'm sure you can add quite a few ads in there or images that you want. Um, the camera image does shift over to the right-hand side a little bit, so uh, you still kind of have some field of view for the camera. So that's how you add the banner ad image on there. That's a to me is, is not too hard to do, but uh, there's definitely a few more steps involved there. Um, let's say if you wanted to turn off the ad, but not remove the playlist. So under deploy, you can go to add enable or add disable. That is the on and off switch for this ad on here, right? So if I hit add disable, hit okay, it'll turn that ad off. See how you, how you notice it disappeared here on the screen. The deploy option is actually when you create a new playlist and you wanna send that to the actual device. So you'll use the deploy option then. So if I hit undeploy, it actually removes this video or this ad that I created off of the device itself. The enable and disable actually just turns the ad on or off. That's The ad's already on there, it just turns it on or off. So, so that's how you add the banner ad to the device using the software. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. All right. So moving on to the actual deterrence message across the bottom here, uh, the one that says recording in progress. There are some really cool options there as well, so I'm gonna show you those. Under the deploy option, you're gonna see deterrence message. And when you have, when you select an actual uh, message here, so I can see right now it says recording in progress. Let me open this up, I'm just gonna choose the welcome one that I created. And you do have some trigger options here. So you, it, you can either have it always on, like it'll always show that um, bar, or you can have it triggered by either one of these options here, PAR, face, motion, or alarm in. So most of the time I just have it set to PIR because that tends to work the best when it's um, recognizing like actual people. And so I'll select the welcome PNG that I got from the um, from the actual files that I already had, and I'll hit OK. So I selected the welcome one PNG. I'll open that back again, and it does have a dimension of 1300 by 75. I'll hit open here, and I'll hit OK. And now, when there's PIR in front of the camera, 
actually did I select? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so once it does see some PIR, you can see that the message changed down there. It says, welcome, you're on camera. Um, so that can be changed, right? And right now it's just kind of working off the PIR sensor. But let's say I just wanted it, I wanted it there all the time. All I got to do is go to deploy, turn this message, always appear. And I, you want to make sure just to reselect that file just in case, because it will disappear and hit okay there. And now the banner ad is going to be on there 24 seven. So right now I have the logo in the top left corner. I have a banner ad here that is switching over a couple of different uh, images. And then I also have the deterrence matches across the bottom. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about in the deploy option is the greeting audio. You can kind of set this as well. What I did find out with the audio is that even to get the audio file to the specifications that this device needs, even for me as a video editor and tons of software, I had to go through a couple of different iterations on getting the uh, sample rate and uh, the size and all that good stuff uh, prepared for that audio file. So it does work, but it's just gonna be a little bit more, um, you're gonna have to probably have some kind of proprietary software, audio software to make those files work. I'm not gonna demo it here cause it's like really loud, but it does work and, I, and, I, and it does, you can also trigger it as well using the PIR face or motion uh, sensors on the device. Okay, so moving back to the actual device. So once I click on this, I'm gonna show you how, what options are in the web browser. And there's some really good information in there about the files needed for this device. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the blue arrow here, and that is going to open up the web browser interface. I'm gonna log in with my username and password. It's gonna take you directly to a live view screen like we all know. Uh, I'm not gonna cover any of this stuff here. I'm just gonna go to settings and I'm gonna go to PVM function. You do have a lot of the same options here inside the web interface. So let's say if you're working with a Mac computer, um, you'll still be able to do some custom branding and images, deterrence, etc., directly from the web browser. So the cool thing that I wanted to show you though, basically the only thing I wanted to show you in here is like, these are all the same. You can do your ads, your banners, and then there's some options in here for it to go to sleep, et cetera, if you wanted to turn off at a certain time. But the cool, the cool thing is that here under the brand image, you do have an option that says the little help button and it gives you the file format that it's looking for and the size of the actual image. So you, know, you wanna make sure that it is a PNG file and you also wanna make sure that it is no bigger than one megabyte. Under the audio, there's a lot of requirements uh, required for this device, so if you hover over it, um, it gives you the file format. It also shows you the size limit and it has to be non-compressed, PCM, 16,000 sample rate. Like I said earlier, um, only to get a file like that, you need some kind of um, proprietary audio software to, to create that file. But overall, in the web interface, there is lots of information in here. Most of it is exactly what you would see in a regular IP camera. Under config media is your video settings. The record option here is important because if you do have an SD card installed, you can uh, actually format that in this area. A lot of other options in here that I'm not gonna cover because I don't wanna make the video too long, but uh, just make sure to spend some time. Just make sure to spend some time with this device if you do purchase it or if you plan on installing it in the field, just spend a day or two with it, clicking around and just getting familiar with it. And I hope that the information that I provided today showing you how to upload the ads and images, I hope that really helps and uh, kind of moves you forward and gets you a good grasp on deploying this device and adding the, in the images and stuff. Overall, I just wanted to give you the information it takes to actually add and configure this device. If you have any more questions, make sure to leave some comments below and I'll try to respond to those. I'd usually check them almost every day. Other than that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and also hit the like button on this video. That way you can get notified when new videos like this one are available.